Hello everybody, this is Bu this is Bugsy No Name here, and I just have an I have another spotlight for you. But I'm not really gonna do a spotlight on on just anyone today. We're gonna do a spotlight for the whole Team H roster. Now, now the Team H roster uh, back in the day, I used to like switch and change it around. But the founding members will always be um, Prime. And no, wait, wait. The founding members will always be H, which is Bugsy H in this universe. Hariman, Anzukamaru of this universe. Um, Giro, Giro, Dororo, and Kulu from Sergeant Frog. Mario and S Mario and Sonic join after because they kind of figure. There's not really much to do in their own universes. Eggman's pretty much joined the Eggman's pretty much joined the Legion of the Legion of the Legion of Villains, which Team H does fight on a daily basis. But since but it's been a few years since the uh, it's been a few years since the older Adventures of Team H, and things have changed. But yeah, but the Legion of Villains have been, the Legion of Villains have been super duper quiet. So pretty much, it's not like they're just banded, but they're in the shadows, watching, waiting, and planning. But I'll talk about them later. So, and you know, but basically these members, they've been through a lot of stuff. You know, the, you know, Giro, Kulu, and Dororo were part of the Art Plate Platoon trying to take over the Earth. But both Giro and Dororo were really tired of Kiro's Kiro shit of trying to take over the uh, trying to take over the Earth, aka Pikapon, and nothing really came out of that. So they just said, you know, uh, they were like, you know, we, you know, we're leaving, we're leaving your stupid, we're leaving the stupid platoon, Kiro. We might as well save the world because that's what we basically do on a that's what we basically do anyway. And Carol's like, guys, guys, come back! We can still take we can still take over the world. And Kulu's like, mm, you know, normally I wouldn't even I wouldn't even really agree with Giro, but he is kind of right. We save the world more than we try to take it over. So see you. So see you, Carol. <laughs> and um, <laughs> sorry about that. It's been a while since I did Kulu's voice, so I I'm a little out of practice. And Doro just basically said, "Yeah, um, I never was. I never really was on board with this anyway. So yeah, Doro is always Doro is always kind of like." The guy who just never was a part of it, but he was a part of it because he, you know, Caro and the others were sort of his friends, even though they kind of ignore him. And you know, you know, um, they well, they left, and you know, Ag actually uh, saw them. And he actually saw them one time because he actually went. He actually was the one that always stopped their plans if they got too far. But, you know, Giro kind of respected him as a warrior. Um, Doro respected the fact that he was very tactical. And Kulu loved the fact that even though he was basically two of those things, he was also kind of, uh, he was also kind of quick on his feet and smart enough to have, a, have his own laboratory. AG basically started, started, uh, Team H, mostly because, you know, he lived in the world of DC for a very long time, but came back to his own universe because there was a lot of crime in Empire City. Yes, every Bugsy lives in Empire City, mostly. But uh, basically, um, in their own universes. But basically, so, so... A.G. 
led the charge and actually wore his Super Duke costume, which he did modify. With with Don Sugimura and Harima at his side, basically calling themselves Team H. And they went on many, many, many adventures. Mostly just mostly just the regular just regular supervillain trying to rob the banks and stuff like that. But when Giro when when half of the arms were platoon, not and you're probably wondering, but but Bugsy, why didn't you add Tanama? Tanama. Uh because one Tanama finally gets with finally stays with Caro, but uh you know, stuff happens there that I'm not going to explain quite yet. <laughs> but uh basically but basically um but basically, yeah. Think think about having Tanama fucking on Team H just for a minute. Just think about that for a minute. Like, he really didn't have a drive because literally, you know, Tanama's more about, you know, two things. Eating and basically Kiro, so you know, without Kiro, he's not really going to want to help anybody really. I mean, not, not to say that they don't, he don't, but, it, you know, his major focuses are, uh, his major focuses are, uh, basically, his major focuses are just Caro and eating and stuff like that. Any other, Car any other, uh, Sergeant Frog members are gonna be on, eh, for, and you guys may ask, are any of the other Sergeant Frog, uh, characters gonna be on this team? Well, I can't really say that just yet, but yeah, I've been thinking about, you know, that was one of the original things I was going to have on Team H to be, you know, to, you know, to begin with. Um, the Yuki was actually going to kind of, the Yuki was going to kind of be their, uh, like their, like the dude that would tell them uh, what they're going up against. It was like a, you know, a crypto or a, uh, or like, you know, crypto, a crypt, yeah. Like something mythical or something, you know, something like Bigfoot or Nessie or some sort of alien. Because Fuyuki, after being with Kara for so long, actually just said, you know, I want to learn more about the uh, other aliens and stuff. So he spent a few years learning, you know, other aliens and all this other stuff. Also, also, while, well, also, a few of the, a few of the team's noticeable accomplishments are the fact that they actually beat the Urkin, they actually beat the Urkin Empire, in a story that I can't find anymore because I don't really have the original thing of it, but I still remember it, it was basically, it was basically the members of Team H, Basically going up against the Arkham Imp the Arkham Empire and Zim trying to show the tallest that he can actually beat he can actually beat a bunch of as he as he said, do good us I can't do Zim. But uh they basically kick Zim's ass like like without like without even trying they whoop his ass. And then like but un but like something really happened. The Taldas actually had like these battle necks and basically tried to take a, tried to squash the earth because literally because literally eh, they squashed the earth literally because Zim kept bothering them. So he's like, F you know, the Taldas and this version actually just fucking cave in and they go, fine, we'll take. We'll take over the earth, Zim. Only if you can leave us alone. And basically, uh, you know, they, you know, they basically take over the earth because they really want to get, get Zim out of their hair, but they didn't know that they were actually heroes willing to stop them. And stop them they did. Remember, the Talos ain't really fighters, but they did have those mechs, and they weren't Somewhat formidable, they were formidable for a time, but Kulu 
actually made everybody else these gigantic mechs. And what what ensued was a gigantic mech battle. Oh, I was so proud of this. I was so proud of that one. And you're probably wondering, well, but well, Bugsy, does that mean did you write this when Enter the Forbes was a thing? No. Not even when the comic books were out. It was just something I wrote because, you know, the teenage needed a, vil a bunch of villains and the Arkans. The Arkans wouldn't. The Arkans, you know, wouldn't come if Zim, if Zim asked them to. But, you know, it does show if they're fucking annoyed enough, they will fuck. They will. They will either fucking kill Zim, because that was their whole plan, like, going to Earth and then fucking killing Zim and probably taking over the Earth, and probably just blowing the Earth up to be like, you know, fuck this planet. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they got, so the Arcan Armada actually got beaten back. They weren't really destroyed, or de they weren't really destroyed, but they were defeated. And because the Arkham Armada got whoops, they did swear that they would come back. Not for Zim, but because there's because since they know they're here, there's heroes on the Earth that are willing to protect it. Maybe there's something on the Earth that that they would want. Also, they just came for fucking snacks. Like another reason because the Earth has like an abundance of like snacks and and. Um, you know, junk food. They, that's why they. That's why they wanted to come too. That was pretty much the reason. Zim actually tempted them in my story with a fucking honey bun. Yes, I wrote that too. <laughs> there are a few times where where H E actually does meet Prime. Actually, that actually in the uh, there was another story that I didn't show on um, my channel back in the day, but. But Prime uh, literally meets, and this is before. Well, this is during at when I decided to call him Prime, where he just kind of meets, um, where Ichi meets Prime, and basically they go up against Bloody when he was still the ultimate. And he's like, and you know, Ichi has the same kind of backstory as Prime, so he does remember. He does know who Bloody is. He does know who the Ultimate is, and they both take him down. Bloody not being defeated slinks away like all the other times, and he goes, and Prime basically goes, "Bloody, one day, I will end you." <laughs> yeah, because Prime really did wanted to kill. One of Prime's goals back in the day was to kill uh, Bloody. And that was kind of one of uh, was kind of one of Ag's goals as well. And basically, now since Bloody's like on Prime's side, you know, it's, it's like that's it's, it's like the story still matters, but it's still kind of. Mm. <sighs> but, but enough about Prime, because I'm thinking what I'm thinking uh, more stuff with him later, but. But anyways, uh, there are a few other, there are a few other times uh, where Team Age kind of was a thing. There was a multi-dimensional tournament where they fight none other than Bo 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 and his and his and his little team, and it was a it was a story full of gags, jokes, and basically. Basically, they fight one of the hair hunt troops, and there are a lot of more gags, a lot more jokes. And and on Sugimaru, uh falling for patches, which I thought was a fucking funny thing, and I sh I should like, but the thing with that one is I only remember bits and pieces of it. Um, but basically, uh, that basically there's that and then there was the media dimension saga a saga i basically teased but never fit never really uh put it out on uh youtube mostly because i didn't think it was good enough and um uh, it was just basically teenage going through um 
the you know the media dimension and then they go fight Rez. But Gex actually comes and like Gex is sort of like a a member that comes on every now and again. Like you'll see him every now and again. He'll just jump out of a TV and go like, "Hey, you guys got." He's like, "Hey, you guys got any work for the? You guys got any work for this lizard?" He's like, you know, AG's like, "Gex, how you doing?" But yeah, Gex is like a temporary member, and I do. Okay, I don't know if any Gex fans, like anybody who's a Gex fan, you're not. Anybody who's not a Gex fan, you are not gonna like what I'm about to say. You probably don't care what I'm about to say, and you Gex fans are probably like, "What the fuck are you talking?" Talking about boy, that was like a that was like a throwaway gag. But I like to I like to say, I like to think when Rez said Gex, I am your father, that was basically that was basically Gex's dad. That was Gex's dad that he thought died. So yes, so yes, Gex is. So yes, Rez is Gex's father, but. Gex, his father, you know, ever since what happened to him, and he went to the media dimension. That's what made him crazy. That's what made Rez and that's what made Gex's father in the Reds because the media dimension, like going through all those channels and going through all that information, is what made him fucking crazy. And uh, basically, they all team up together and fight Rez and. And Gex even has, like, a heartfelt moment. No jokes. He just goes, why? And Rez goes, why, son? I'll tell you why. Because what is the one thing we all do as a species? Sit in front of the TV. You know, if I control that TV, if I control the TVs, I can control... I can control the world. Information. Everybody will bow down to me. And you can rule alongside me, son. It's not too late. And Gex says no, and they all just... Like, Gex fights Rez, while the others basically deal with the... Uh, what I like to call TV droids. But these are like TV droids V3. Which are just these... Big television-like robots that uh spout that spout like old TV show stuff, where they have the powers of said TV show. Most of them, most of them were tuned to anime channels, like uh, most of them were tuned like anime uh programming and stuff, just to make it interesting. Because no one wanted this, no, because I was like, that could work. Also, also the rest of the teenage gang uh go in and uh basically. They go in and basically uh, go mess with Twilight. Like, AG, like... <coughs> AG has, like, various things that kind of... He is kind of like Prime in the way that, you know, just like just like him. And they're very interesting creator, which is myself. That, you know, don't like Twilight. They poke everything that's wrong with it. Uh, and they poke the last movie too and go you know he, he looked at like people are actually watching Twilight's like he looked at the screen and basically says you know Twilight's just a fantasy that an old woman created so all you ch all you chicks out there can feel like you can love a dangerously dark bad boy right you know Twilight's not a Twilight's not a good thing a good depiction of vampires like Jesus why do you guys want to Sex of vampires. That's the worst thing that you could do. Have you all watched? He's like, have you all watched True Blood? It doesn't end well. Then, you know, basically the ratings drop for Twilight. It's never shown on that. It's never really shown on that channel again. And, you know, every, you know, every other teammate, even Sonic and Mario, go like, was that re Mario goes like was that really necessary? Yes it was. Yes it was. Again, AG nowadays is a lot more serious, but uh there was a time where he was a lot more uh before the war he was a lot like prime in a way. Always making jokes, always saying 
always making jokes, always, you know, making sure everybody has a good time off mission, stuff like that. That was him. Um, about Mario and Sonic, Bowser basically just, uh, Bowser basically just said, you know, I ain't fighting, I'm not gonna steal PG anymore, but we will always fight Mario. That will always happen. Eggman decided, you know, since he always loses to Sonic, working working with the team might actually help him out. And basically, Mario and Sonic still fight with each other because they are kind of rivals. Unlike my, unlike my friend who makes Sonic and Sonic videos, uh, Mario and Sonic in my universe, they uh, they 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 are rivals. They are rivals, and they kind of hate each other, but they kind they. Have they respect each other, but they always do get on each other's nerves and talk about their games. And the fact that, and even to this day, Mario talks about Mario Odyssey when, when it, when Sonic talks about Sonic Forces, he goes, "Well, you know, well, he's like, you know what, Mario, you're, he's like, you know what, Mario, you're a cunt. <laughs> oh, you have nothing to say about." You had nothing to say about forces? No, Mario, I had nothing to say. Also, also, um, also, there was, there was a planned event called, called the, ex called the extreme, the extreme, the, the, uh, the, the, the Extremo Invasion, which uh, were these aliens from other races. Hell, even the Cluster actually makes an appearance. Actually, they were, actually, if I remember correctly, it was the Cluster with the Urkins again and a few other alien races. I think Vilgax's race is going to be in this, if I remember correctly. And basically, it was just this big old invasion arc. I really like those. I mean, I kind of did that with uh, with uh, Argos from the Dragon Ball Universe thing that I was doing. I really seem to like those. Um, but basically, it was just a big old fight. The Kir Kiro and Tanama joined for a bit. Um, pretty much, pretty much some of uh, pretty much. Age, pretty much Ag's brothers, other brothers join like Zan and Sep and Gibbs. They, they all join. It was the only t like I would say Ag is the only time. Ag is the only Bugsy who actually really has an actual good relationship with both Gibbs. Has a good relationship with Gibbs and Zan because you know Prime in his universe he hates. He hates the he hates his prime version of his brothers, but Ag doesn't have that kind of thing because he never because the things were like you know prime was chosen for the crown, but Ag really just never really was interested in ruling his race, and it never really was a big issue for him. Actually, Zan's the king of the Chaos Lords in the Team H verse universe. Yeah, Zan, yeah, I basically give Zan what he wanted in the Prime Universe, <laughs> but only in the Age Universe, like, and even Zan from, uh, the Prime Universe goes, like, that's totally, he goes, like, that ain't fair. <laughs> he, uh, he put, and, you know, Age First, Zan is like, you know what, I'm sorry, man, but, uh, here, you want to be a part of my royal, royal court? Whenever you're in, whenever you're in my universe, you can. I know probably it doesn't change what happened to you, but it's good enough, right? And he goes like, I guess. But uh, yeah. But yeah, everybody just basically fights the horde of alien invaders. The cluster actually even even X G Nine actually comes for this because Trevorton is in the age where in the H first universe, like in that universe. So, um, so yeah, so 
So Jenny gets to fight the cluster. Um, and she does kind of find she does kind of find she does find Harima kind of kind of attractive. He does find she does think that Ag is a good leader, and he does she doesn't really like Har and she doesn't really like Asakura because still Asakura is still a pervert. That that's the same in any universe that I've written. Asakura still kind of stays the same, but changes a little bit of wh of what he's about. Um, a few other a few other notable feats. They actually did help. The Justice League uh, fight Star, fight Starro. Um, Lobo actually became a member of the t of, t of the Team H verse after a long ass fight between Ag and him. Because you know, Ag actually Ag and Lobo used to hang out. Even though Lobo, he's sort of a he's sort of an he's sort of an anti-hero in a way and. He's sort of a villain. He is a villain, and he's kind of like a hero. But he does kind of hang out with Lobo because him and Lobo actually are kind of friends. He's like, so he's, so he's like, so you want me to join your team? He's like, Lobo, you don't want you don't want to join my team. We do everything by the book. It's not really fun. It wouldn't be really fun for you. He's like, come on. He's like, come on. He's like, come on. He's like, come on, Bugsy, we can hang out we can hang out a lot more. And do a whole bunch of stuff if I join you. He's like, uh he's like, well, well, really? I mean, dude, you really want you You really want us to fight? Remember the last time we all fought? We kinda just we kinda left the we kinda left the planet sized crater in in a planet one time. And that was when we were both drunk. And you know they did kind of fight a little bit, both pulling their punches. He's like, Lobo looks at him. He's like, Ugh. you still, you still, you still pack a punch. You still pack a punch. And Ag goes, you're, st you're still the same old Lobo. You're still the same old Lobo. And you still hit like a goddamn freight train. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, you can join the team, but dude, no, dude, no killing until no killing unless it's a uh, until it's a last option. Then we kill. He's like, okay, I, I got you. It's, I got you. And he's like, I got you, oh fearless leader. And he just laughs a bit. He's like, I am never gonna get used calling you fearless leader. You know, I have to call me fearless leader. It's kind of weird that you would. <laughs> you know, Lobo's kind of like Gex in the part in the fact that he's sort of a member of the team, but not really. It's just kind of there when he's there. He's there. Um, Ansakamaru basically joined because of Ag. There's really nothing there. He's still kind of the same person. That he is inside the prime dimension. He still likes guns. He still uses mostly he uses mostly guns and stuff like that and big ass fucking bazookas. Harima hasn't really Harima's storyline is kind of different because he still chases after Tenma, but there's not really a fight between um you know this version this. This Bugsy, this universe's version of Bugsy, and this version of Harima, he basically goes, "Dude, follow your heart, and if you need something, just just call." It still happens the same way, but um, but he just, but you know, even the part where uh Harima's at, you know, at Team H headquarters, and he just goes, "Is." Is Mr. Is Mr. Is Mr. Kuro there? And and you know he and upon hearing Harima's voice, he just goes to him. And he goes, "What happened, man? A lot of things. 
And he's like, you know what, man? Let me go get you some cocoa. Because he was still out in the rain. <laughs> but yeah, nothing really changes between the the big three the big three of the team. Kara decides that he, Kara Kara decides to kinda join the Legion of Villains, but the Legion of Villains don't really want Kara all around, so they just kinda kick him out. Though he does work with Pinky and the Brain, and yes, Pinky and the Brain are in this universe, don't ask. They did have Minerva, they did have Minerva Mink for a while, but uh which she was Aishi's girlfriend at the time, but uh they kinda had a very, 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 very mess up very weird little breakup and they just kinda split. But, uh, yeah. And, but Minerva really doesn't like the fact that, um, AG is now married. Most of the, most of the chicks that, um, AG used to be with, like, Donna Troy and Harley Quinn and Minerva, they're just all, like, not liking the fact that he's, he's got a wife and now nah, he's got a kid, too. And they just kind of, they kind of are, like, they kind of get together and get a little depressed. <laughs> because that could have been either of them. <sighs> but yeah. It, oh, but yeah, the Team H universe is big and vast. It's all part of the big omniverse of uh, my universe that I created. But it is... But it's still a very interesting... Sometimes dark, but sometimes very lighthearted universe. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, this basically this is spotlight on teenage, but it really just shows the history and the backstory of everything that's happened up until now. The only thing that happened after, before that is that when the war started, and and you know the big. You know, basically, eight, basically, um, Harima and Ansakamaru both died in the war saving Aichi. He exiled, he exiled some back on Earth because he really didn't want anything to do with the Chaos Lords. And basically went back to Teenage Headquarters, basically telling Dororo, um, I've been watching, I saved these kids and... I want you to train them and make them and make make them into very strong warriors. And Doro really asks them, "Where where are you gonna go?" And he says, "I'm going to a little place called Beach City because I'm needed there." Okay. I mean, if there's one thing I can do to atone for everything that I've done in that war and show that my brothers. My brother's sacrifices were in vain. I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna. You can say I'm going to pay it forward. He, oh yeah, but the Pink Diamond stuff. He kind of met Pink Diamond uh, way when he was like, like bef like when he was kind of the protector when Team H was kind of the protector of Earth. And he did hang out in Beach City. Um, but he did kind of, but he did kind of see, uh, Rose, aka Pink Diamond, as kind of a big sister of sorts. And they just, you know, there was never really like a romantic thing. But um, even though Pink kind of wanted there to be a romantic thing between them, but it was always platonic, even though, um. Pearl actually fought H E one time on the grounds that, like, how can you not find her, like, how can you not find her attractive? I find her attractive. And he goes like, well, I think of her as, I think of her as not really someone I want to be with, but something, someone I can actually have, you know, have on my side, like, as 
kind of like a big sister. And you know gems don't have the concept of, like, family. So she's like, what? And Pearl's like, what does that even mean? And, like, Garnet stops stops her. But they do. But a but Aichi and Pearl have fought in the past. A lot. Basically, yeah, that's where we are now. Years after, years after Aichi fought Thanos, Team H is still run by Doro, and the other, the other members are still there, along with Travis Touchdown. You know, Travis Touchdown really did ask Prime, well, he asked Aichi about why is he not the member. He's like, Travis, you're more of a guy than we need in the team. You. You know, you and I both know, you can't lead. You're not ready. You ain't ready to lead this team at all. I mean, it's kind of weird that the first, that's the first thing you actually brought up, that you want to lead, lead the team. But, you know, um, Travis actually asked him, um, while he, you know, after everything that happened after Change Your Mind, it, is he ever coming back? I mean, well, after Omni Fracturing, he's going to ask him, are you coming back? And he's going to give him a very interesting surprise. That's all I got to say. Um, yeah. That's kind of the backstory of Team H, how they, get, how they got started, how everything happened. And yeah, I'm doing another spotlight later on on Sam and Max. Because... They did kind of relocate from New York to Empire City, and they're more like street-level heroes. When Team H can't really be there, Sam and Max are usually the ones that uh, kind of clean up the mess. The, you know, because they are freelance police. Also, we're going to talk about... Also, in the Spotlight series, we're also going to talk about Gar's Bodega. Oh, yes! OKKO is going to be a part of the Team H universe, because... Damn it, it may not, it may not be, it may, like, it, like, to, like, freaking Cartoon Network may be taking it up, taking it off, but that don't mean it ain't gonna live on. And a few things will probably change, but it'll be pretty good. See you guys later. Peace. Oh, yeah. The next storyline after Omni Fracturing and the little video thing of uh, what the Steven Universe movie is going to be, KL actually becomes a member of Team H, like a recruit. And so does St and you know, and Steven actually does, does actually join Team H for a bit, just to see what his uncle, re what Team H is and what he really does. Or what he used to do as the leader. And there's so many other other things that Team H has done that I'm gonna actually, that I'm actually gonna talk in like, what I'm actually gonna cover in like flashback stories. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Peace. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you like any of this, like and subscribe and share this video around. See if people actually want to see this. I'm still gonna do this regardless. Uh, you know, have a good rest of your day, folks. Bye.